Welcome back to Your Health Television Program. I'm Dr. David Morwood. I am a board-certified plastic surgeon. I'm delighted to have you with us for the special edition of Your Health, all about vision. My next distinguished guest, Dr. Ellie Hattori, optometrist. Dr. Hattori, thanks so very much for being here. Oh, thank you for inviting me. Dr. Hattori, let's teach the public about mm -hmm. some of you, what your average day is like and what the training is for an optometrist. Okay. And let's just touch on briefly the difference between an ophthalmologist and an optometrist. Sure. Can sure. We? And so, an optician even. An optician. We're called the three O's. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So so what's your training like to okay. become an optometrist? To be an optometrist, you go through your general lower um, undergraduate work. Okay, and so everybody goes to college. Everybody goes to college and it'll be a four-year undergraduate training. Okay. And then you go to what we call optometry school, which would be like graduate school, and it's a four-year program. So another four years, another four years after college. After college, and that concentrates just on um, your eyes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And treating of the eyes. Mm -hmm. So you have a you are licensed in California. Correct. To be an optometrist. Correct. And so in general, what's your average day, your average week like? Right. Um, generally, when a person goes to an optometrist, the most common time they come is for a general comprehensive eye examination. Generally, the eyes are healthy. Uh, you would come in because possibly you might have trouble seeing and uh, we are trained to correct your vision for you. We have several ways we can do that. We can either do it with glasses, we do it with contact lenses, and um, cons that way we will and allow a healthy eye to be able to see its best possible way. Okay, now Dr. Hattori, uh, you have an office here, a very busy office, and you have some colleagues and partners. You're on yes. Pacific Street in Monterey. Correct. Now, can I give out your phone number while we have a moment? Absolutely. Uh, 372-8181. Okay, 372-8181. Mm -hmm. Dr. Ellie Hattori, you're an optometrist. Correct. So, I have, I'm going to learn a lot in this segment. <laughs> Dr. Hattori, I want to start off by asking, when you put devices and different lenses in front of a patient and you say is this better or is this better or is this worse mm -hmm. what are you doing what is that all about <laughs> yes what we're trying to figure out is because of the fact that when you have when you're not seen perfectly we have what you call a refractive error and what that means is that you're whenever you I'm going to borrow this beautiful model here when you're looking at an image coming in through the eye Typically, if you have, if you're seen perfectly, that image would focus coming through the cornea exactly at the back of the retina into a sharp focus right there. However, sometimes you don't see perfectly. You might be nearsighted or farsighted. And what happens is we're clicking those lenses to, and to figure out what power would change that image to focus perfectly in the back of your retina. Okay, so, so you're actually at, you're actually trying to change the light stream coming in, the correct, light reflection correct. with a lens yes. to make mm -hmm. it in, in a more re, a perfect refractory position correct. to land exactly on, on the, the back of the retina, on okay. the back of the eye. So, so commonly mm -hmm. we can do that with spectacles, with glasses, yes. or with contact lenses, exactly. correct? And, yes. So, so just briefly, mm -hmm. how does a pair of spectacles, how does that refract the light right. so, it's, so it makes it more perfect? Right. When it goes, well, for instance, if you are nearsighted, it will be going through what we call a concave lens. And so what happens is that it can redirect that light that's coming in through the cornea, because the glasses or the contact lenses are sitting in front, it can redirect that image so that it will focus to a sharp point in the back. Okay, so, so it actually changes, it the, changes the way the image and the light beam. Correct. The ref is, yes, is the direction in. of the light coming in. Okay. Yes. Now, I, I feel like I have a hundred questions for you, but, but I've got to kind of streamline. What, what do we mean when we say astigmatism? Right. Um, Dr. Del Perro actually led us perfectly to discuss about this cornea. Typically speaking, when a cornea is not perfectly spherical or round like this, we have astigmatism. And what that means is, the curvature here is not perfectly spherical, but aspheric. One section of it can be more steep than the other side, the other area. So you might commonly hear people say that 
uh, my eye is shaped more like a football rather than a baseball. That's what they're relating to. If this was pliable, I can show you that this is a perfect sphere. However, if you had astigmatism, it would be like me kind of squeezing it a little bit, so it's shaped okay. a little bit steeper here and a little bit flatter on one side. Okay, so that's astigmatism. Right. So, so then when you have an image coming in and you have astigmatism because it's going through two different curvatures, that focus will now be split. It will, okay. instead of, for instance, if you are nearsighted, the image that you will be focusing will end up back here. Okay. okay, so so is it typical that someone with astigmatism may have an easier time getting vision correction with spectacles or glasses as opposed to contacts? Not or? necessarily. Years ago, possibly, we might ha we might have heard that that um, I can't wear contact lenses because I have astigmatism. But with the new um, technology, it's no longer so. Okay, yeah. so that's a perfect segue to my next topic of questions mm -hmm. about, uh, about contact lenses. Mm -hmm. So give us an introduction in about the 15 minutes we have left. What do we mean by contact lenses? Okay. Contact lenses is a piece of plastic, a, a special kind of plastic, that actually rests on the front of the cornea and it could change again the direction of the light so that the image that comes to the back of the eye reaches a sharp image. Okay, so, so contact lenses can be made Just like of glasses, it's contact lenses is the ability to be your glasses free and um, it's, it sits directly right on the tear layer of the uh, cornea. Okay, so tell us about uh, eye care and contact lens care. Do people mm -hmm. wear them at night? Do they throw them mm -hmm. away? Is it the same mm -hmm. contact lens they wear for a month yeah. and then discard yeah. or do they wear mm -hmm. it for a year? Right. Give us a summary okay. of contact lens um, care. Contact lenses itself, um, the modality whether you wear it one day and throw it away or wear it for a month and change it every and, and, and you know take it out of your eye and clean it and wear it the next day uh, depends on um, a lot on to me uh, a, a person's individual needs and uh, because each modality has its pluses and minuses. Mm -hmm. uh, when you have, um, uh, for instance, if you were a person that uh, wanted to be making sure that um, you don't have to clean your lenses because, you know, your lifestyle doesn't lend itself to it. Or you might want to wear your lenses not, you know, frequently, maybe on the weekends for a specific activity. A one-use lens, a, a true disposal might be the way to go. Um, the one-day lens right now, however, it does not have all the options available to it. And what I mean by that is that um, contact lenses has a lot of, of, of benefits, are, are uh, different kinds of, of, of of, of lenses that are available. You have those that you can correct for, for instance, if you just need one correction, you only need it for distance, okay? And as Dr. Del Piero was saying, as we mature and we get older, we lose some of our accommodation. Well, now you have two prescriptions, okay? Then the third way that you might throw in is that you might have astigmatism. So whether you need um, all three, you know, it might be not available in those all three requirements in a one-use lens. So a lot of whether you go with a one-day throwaway, a, you know, or other modalities depends a lot on your individual needs. Okay, Dr. Hattori, let's back up for a moment. Okay. We know that the cornea that we're mm -hmm, talking about mm -hmm. is a human tissue like Correct. any other tissue, Correct. so it needs nutrients, it needs right, oxygen, right, etc. Right. Now, now, isn't it true that the cornea gets some of its nutrition from the air and yes, tears does. in front yes, of it? Yes, it does. And so, so does the contact lens interfere with the amount of mm -hmm. oxygen getting to no. the lens? I'm glad you asked that because uh, that was truly a concern years ago. But today, with the new materials that are available, it is phenomenal on the amount of oxygen that can come in. Um, there are studies to show that actually, some, there sometimes you can't even tell whether you've had a lens on an eye or not, the amount of nutrients that is coming in. And that leads me to the earlier part of your question, asking, can you sleep in them? Do you have to take them out? There's, um, there's always been two things that we've been concerned about when a person sleeps in their lenses. One is that you're not getting enough oxygen. And the second one is that um, it, you're not cleaning your lenses, so there's a higher risk of an eye infection when you sleep in your lenses. 
Well, to, with today's technology, we have the oxygen coming in, so it's, it's really, that's not as much an issue as the not cleaning of the lenses. So even as, as great as the materials are today, we, we still are very cautious about sleeping in lenses. Okay. Dr. Hattori, another question about being fitted for contact lenses or spectacles, glasses we mm -hmm. call them. Mm -hmm. uh, I wonder what's the average age when a child or a young adult will maybe come to the optometrist mm -hmm. concerned about the way that they're seeing or mm -hmm. their lack of perfect right, vision. Right. Do, you, do you know the average age? Is there an average age? Um, where you well, might the, I can tell you the recommended age. <laughs> Um, the recommended age for your first eye examination is at six months old. Six, six months? Six months old. As a matter of fact, there is a program in California called Infant C. And um, we happen to be uh, on that program. And when you're six months old, you go to your optometrist and you can have your first eye examination complimentary. At six months? At six months, yes. You can test for how well you see. You can also take a look at inside the eye. You can actually do quite a bit without, you know, communication. That's yes. amazing. Mm -hmm. So well, that, that's a segue to my mm -hmm. question. At roughly what age could a child or young adult or teenager be mm -hmm. eligible for contacts? Yeah. Let's say they, mm -hmm. they do okay with glasses mm -hmm. or spectacles, mm -hmm. but they prefer not wearing yes. something on the yes, outside. Yes. And um, your comment is uh, that they prefer not to. That's, that's really one of the key uh, elements is how motivated is the child? Um, is the child wanting it because a girlfriend has it or, or their, you know, their classmate has it? Or is it because it truly is going to make a difference in their activity? For instance, if they're very heavily into sport, the glasses just gets in the way. And, um, and that would be a very high motivating factor. Um, mom and dad have to also know, is this child responsible? Will they be able to uh, take on the responsibility of the care and uh, you know how you wear these lenses? Um, and that's where the one day lens truly comes into you know, play. But um, as far as age goes, it's, it's really dependent on motivation, um, you know, how, bad, how much, the, uh, what the reasons why the person wants it and when they're responsible. And that, you know, it could be a nine-year-old, it could be a, you know, 18-year-old. Okay. Yeah. Dr. Hattori, you mentioned sports for young adults. Yes. You know, it wasn't, it was not that long ago in high school, I mm -hmm. clearly recall in a basketball game, Looking every, for once, your every once in a yes. while, the whole team, yes. the whole game would stop yes. and the refs would stop yes. and, and people would look for a contact lens. Yes. It seems that hardly ever happens That's anymore. Correct. Now, yes. why is it, what's the mm -hmm. difference between now yeah. and then? Okay. Uh, the lenses back then, I don't want to say back then when, you know, it wasn't the day, I don't want to date, I don't want to date you. <laughs> but, um, when there we were looking for lenses on the ground, those were what are what we called rigid gas permeable lenses, or some people like to refer to them as hard lenses. They're much smaller and they're not as stable on the eye. So if you were to look quickly to over to the side, they can displace. In the late 70s, when they came out with soft contact lenses, they're much larger and they're much more stable on the eye. It was revolutionary for the sports world. Um, they, they are very stable on the eye. And, and as, it, as you know, but to remove a soft contact lens, you actually have to go in and physically touch the lens and lift it off. That's how secure they are on the eye. Okay. Now, Dr. Hattori, in terms of people wearing contact lenses for many years, mm -hmm. have there been any studies that indicate that it's, it's okay to have contact lenses for 20 years yeah. or 30 years? Mm -hmm. or, or Ab Absolutely, yes. I've been... Uh, in the eye care business for over 30 years. And true, the lenses that we've had before were possibly not as oxygen permeable, but we also um, gave different recommendations. We told uh, our patients at that time, limited number of hours. Um, you know, we, we, we had different uh, uh, ways that we would uh, make up for that. Uh, now, gosh, you know, Many lenses now, to be honest, are approved by the FDA to be slept in for, for several days at a time. So uh, just in looking back between then and now, recommendations are different. We know we're learning better now on, on what to do. Okay, and now what about for people with special conditions? Like we talked about astigmatism. Mm -hmm. I want to know about contact lenses for astigmatism. Or let's say mm -hmm. someone yes. has dry eyes yes. and they need to use yes. drops. Yes. Can we talk about those Absolutely. two situations? Absolutely. Um, 
A, tip, a, a standard contact lens has one prescription that uh, throughout the entire lens that sits on, on the cornea. When you have astigmatism, remember I mentioned that you have two focal points. Well, in order to make sure that we take care of that in a contact lens, what we do is we actually uh, design the lens so that it does have two different prescriptions on it, just like you do in spectacles. In spectacles, is not as much a concern because once you put in the glasses, it's stationary on the bridge of your nose and it doesn't move, so it corrects perfectly. However, when you put it into a contact lens, it's, a, it, it's, it's not a static situation, it's, it's dynamic. Your eyes, you know, you blink, the lens can rotate, so how we take care of that is we actually make a contact lens that has to have a stabilizing unit to it. The most typical way of doing that is making the bottom part of the lens a little bit thicker, and we call it, it has now a prism. So every time you blink, just like with gravity, it always will go only sit in one way. And so then your correction is stable then. Well, and that has come a long ways itself, because uh, just a couple of years ago, um, the lenses, you, you had astigmatism, um, you might still, every time you blink, it might go in and out a little bit because the lens would rotate. Well, today the, 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 the stabilizing units are incredible. That's amazing. Now, Dr. Hattori, just briefly, what about people with dry eyes? Can yes. they get contacts no. or do they just have yeah. to have spectacles and glasses? No, not at all. We have the, the newer technology of contact lenses now really addresses the dry eye. The lens materials now are much moister. In fact, many of them now have what we call a plasma treatment on it so that the lenses retain its moisture longer. Also, um, we have solutions that are very different from, say, even a year ago. The cleaning solutions now have been reformulated to take that into account. They have hydrating um, uh, 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 formulas now. Dr. Tori, very and, and, and very briefly, I've got to wrap this up, unfortunately. So if someone has contact lenses, how often should they see their optometrist? Once a year, every 12 months. A contact lens is a medical device, and your eyes can change, and, um, you know, it really needs to be re-evaluated because it's a, a, it's a foreign body. Contact lens is a foreign body, and it, it rests directly on a body part. And so it really needs to be evaluated every 12 months. Excellent. Dr. Ellie Hattori, your optometrist, your specialist in contact lenses. Mm -hmm. You're here in Monterey on Pacific Street. 831-372-8181. Dr. Ellie Hattori, optometrist, contact lens specialist. You're teaching me a lot, Dr. Hattori. Thank Thanks you very so much, much for, for the opportunity. On the program. Thank you. Thank you. This is Your Health Television Program. I'm Dr. David Morwood. I am a board-certified plastic surgeon. And we're coming right back after a very brief pause for a very good cause.